Matthew Morris, MM1 Studio. Today is Saturday, February 27th, which means it's time for another weekly shop update. So what's been going on in the shop this week? Well, I released an update last week, as you guys know, and I was away. So I was in beautiful Washington, D.C. As you can see, um, there's a little bit of work going on here in the Capitol. There's some construction going on. Um, and then I came home and I was able to get some work done in the shop. So let's talk about that. So the table looks maybe very similar to the way it did in the last update, but there's been a, num a lot of work done since then with a little bit of work left to do. I'm in the home stretch here. I'm so excited. So let me talk to you about what I've done. So the breadboard ends are attached just like they were last week, but instead of just being attached, they are finally located and screwed in. Now in order to do that, the before I'm able to do that, that is, I need to do some more work on the breadboard ends. So the first thing I did was over at the bench, I laid out the locations of the mortises for my ebony splines. After I laid these guys out, I headed over to the router table where I took multiple passes to remove the material to create my mortises. Now, the mortises are round and I'm not going to round over my ebony bars, but instead I'm going to make them square. So over at the bench with some chisels, a marking knife and a square, I was able to square up all of these mortises and they look really good. Very happy with them. They look great. I can't wait to put some ebony splines inside of them. Now, with those guys done, the next step is to head over to the drill press and drill out some holes. So um, I'm using screws to attach the breadboard end at three places, the center as well as the two outside points, but in, in enough that I'm going to grab some meat from the tenon. And remember the tenon is about an inch, ends about an inch, an inch in from the outside edges all the way around. So my screws couldn't be as far out as um, you may think they would be, they were in a little bit deeper. Now the screw in the center, the hole there um, has no play in it. That pilot hole is the size for the screw. However, the pilot holes on the outer edges, um, those holes are enlarged after I've located everything. And the reason for that is you wanna have the screw be able to move like this with the expansion and contraction of the tabletop. So as the top expands and contracts from the center out, I want to be able to have the breadboard ends to move and match that as well. So that's why you make these holes for the ends just a little bit wider. So you want to be able to take your screw and just push it in without it ever catching, um, the threads ever catching the hole there. So that's where I am at the tabletop. Now the next step here is to cut the mortises for the stepped ebony splines um, right here. But it's Saturday, it's about 5.30 in the afternoon. I was ready to start this, but I figured, well, let's shoot the update just in case I don't have enough time to get all these done. I wanna get an update in this week. So that's either gonna happen today or tomorrow, um, but either way, I wanted to get the update in because I didn't wanna miss a week. So that's pretty much it for this week, except I have missed the question of the week for the past couple of weeks. So the question of the week for this week is, do you prefer good old fashioned screwdrivers like this or more modern day ones where you can change the bits out to use it one screwdriver on multiple types of screws? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. And as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the like button, share your timeline, and head over to the MM Wood Studio page on Facebook and like us there as well. And as always, everybody, have a great week in the shop.